Hello my soccer universe, it's been a month since I made a long form video on Serie A and much has happened in these few weeks and this will be a more video where I talk about general trends and so on you will see the results of the last few weeks go through there will be a few uh, there will be all the results get some makeup games but I want to look at the overall picture we'll talk of course about my team Milan uh, most importantly then some other uh, big events that we had since I think February 20th I published the last video so yeah I think the first one that we have to talk about and this is the big one after uh, Inter and Napoli have been eliminated from the Champions League is of course the question um, is Serie A really not as good as they were last season are they having a down year and so on I mean we have Inter running away with, with the league and then they cannot even beat an Atleti team that is not that great in the Champions League and especially in La Liga now I think this was an unlucky result. You know, it's a knockout competition, and if Inter convert the chances in the first leg, or not, to which I'm looking at you, um, I think we have a completely different story here. Yes, Inter did not perform well, but I think this was the one fluky result. Italy still have the highest coefficient based on this season's result. So Serie A is actually doing quite well. Uh, it was also proper bad luck that the two best teams from last season, this season are not that great with Napoli and uh, Lazio right here, that they are sitting more or less mid-table. So you would not expect them to advance uh, further than the round of 16 than they did. Yes, there should be a higher potential for Napoli uh, than for Lazio to be honest but both teams have been in the funk both teams have many have changed managers I mean Sari just stepped down because now we know the reason if it was a reason really he wanted to give that squad a jolt I don't really believe it I think he, he felt uh, that he was not really backed uh, by Lotito and Napoli had stabilized but it came a little bit too late and I think the boost from uh, Calzona come coming in also it's, it's gone a little bit side side was although uh, last night's re 1-1 against Inter was a credible result but I think this was also a result m more totally conditioned by both teams you know kind of trying to exercise the bad feeling from being um, out of the Champions League already Napoli I think both Napoli had a good chance against Barcelona and it's a little bit damning that in a year where I would claim that La Liga is really having an off year I mean you see it across the bank that you cannot beat either Barcelona or Atleti but you know it happened uh, the true strength I think of Serie A is shown in the other two com competitions I mean the Europa League you have three quarterfinalists yes Milan and Roma play each other which might be an unlucky draw in a, in a way but that is um, and Atalanta is playing now Liverpool so we, one may have only one semifinalist but you have a guaranteed semifinalist and Fiorentina had a really good um, uh, draw as well so you might have two semi-finalists again and then it looks all better whereas England and Germany have a lot of head-to-heads to, -heads to uh, uh, take it out for the last spot Serie A looks rel relatively secure to at least get one of the five spots uh, one of these fifth spots the two of that are av available so I think overall Serie A is having not such a bad season it's just that you're out in the Champions League I think Inter is a fluke also speaks that Inter probably does well they had a really great run last year and I have to say this year's Inter team is probably even better than last year's except the depth up front I mean Lukaku is a much better component than if you have Anatovic or Alexis Sanchez up, uh, up front but I think the way that the squad is built overall is really good and the miracles that Inzaghi has done I mean they have been losing that for two years in a row the best players and the team is getting better I mean this is an inter team that uh, could have a result for, for the ages although um, it might be that this down and out of not being the champ Champions League and you know you don't really have much to play for you just have to get the league over the line that might might be, although I think the run in for Inter will be more or less like Napoli's last year. Everyone knows they're gonna be cha cha champions. There will be some off results now, and maybe you can keep the momentum going. The fear scenario, and we're gonna turn it to Milan, is that when the derby is being played, Inter can secure the championship against Milan and you know rub it into Milan's noses that they have no two stars. 
we have all all the one because that was the big um, storyline ahead, ahead of the season. The two teams on 19 titles in this kind of in the 2020 20 title. There's not much else. So let's talk a little bit about Milan. I mean, uh, in these four rounds, I mean, the last time we talked, Milan had just lost against Monza in a really, really bad way. Uh, kind of so and so so performances. It was also in Europe. Uh, I think the game away to Rennes and also then the game uh, at home to Slavia Prague were not great, great games. Uh, on the flip side, you had actually a pretty good game against Atalanta. We completely dominated at Atalanta. This was at Atalanta that was red hot at that point. And you should have beaten Atalanta. I mean, you gave up a fluke penalty and you created enough ch uh, chances. But then, then on the flip side, you go to Lazio and in probably the weirdest game of the entire season, I mean, Lazio got three red cards. And I would say there's an argument to made for each of the red cards. But Lazio were, I think, even with a man less, always dangerous. Yes, Milan took the lead then, uh, but to, to be honest, I was never feeling secure on that one. Even when they were a man down, I thought that Lazio could equalize. I mean, heck, even with uh, two men down, they had a chance to equalize. So that was not a very promising per 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 performance. Um, but then you had the good performance in Prague. I think that uh, that was what was needed. And then you had uh, the last two weekends, relatively stress-free performances. Not great, but you got the wins here. 1-0 over M Empoli. Probably could have, could have, could have come, but you know, not much of the compound the last weekend against Verona was also a 3 1 win, largely stress free. So, uh, Milan are now in a secure second spot because Juve are completely derailed at the moment. I mean, in the last four rounds, yes, they had uh, the win against Frosinone, but then uh, you lose to Napoli. That was a little, little bit unlucky because, I mean, if Laovic uh, has his sh shoe shooting boots on, he will convert one of his three chances at, at least and Napoli do not win. So it was a luck giving for, Na for Napoli. But then you have two rather uh, stale draws. Uh, one against Atalanta. Well, but that was not so bad of, of, of a game. But the one against Genoa and, you know, Allegri is already feeling that he's not having, having the support, uh, making weird in, in, interviews. But Juve's season is going definitely size, so, so, so sideways. They will finish top four. I'm pretty sure about that, but uh, the second spot that they were looking, I mean, they were the closest contenders to Inter. They are miles off the pace now. There's over 20 points now when they were almost level. They were ahead of Inter even at the beginning of, of the year, whereas Milan have now overtaken Juventus. So this was um, definite in, 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 interesting development. Um, given that probably Serie A will have a fifth Champions League spot. I mean, the race for fourth place, still Bologna in the lead and Bologna having a really great form, only losing to Inter at home. I think that you, you, you can do, but uh, the wins that they uh, got, you uh, beat Verona 2-0 at home, uh, you beat Atalanta away from home, then you lost to Inter, uh, and then this last weekend you got a 1-0 in the last minute against Empoli, an Empoli team that is really fighting against re relegation. The relegation battle will be the last thing that we definitely will have to talk about in this, this video. But Bologna is in really, really good form and is in a very good shape to at least finish top five. I think there's a top four in there, whereas Roma uh, still playing great. I mean, the Rossi still uh, having a great uh, run. I mean, yes, the draw against uh, Fiora Fiorentina was a lucky one. They should have lost it. They lost to Inter where they actually played well. And you could see now that um, having also the Europa League, uh, Roma low looks at. I mean, did the win against Sassuolo, a really bad Sassuolo team. Uh, they just got a goal because um, Pepe, Pepe, Pepe Pellegrini shot from uh, distance. Yes, this was maybe not much to talk home about, but you still get the wins. I do have, have a feeling that the high for Roma was reached when they beat Brighton with a really clean performance for 4 nil. I mean, it was not really a 4-0. Uh, and since then, it's kind of a little bit going still good, but you feel feel that the real boost is gone. So uh, Quo Vadis Roma and similar for At 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 Atalanta who won a really good run the last time we talked and now they had uh, some really rough results. I mean the draw at Milan, they didn't look good and they got totally battered by Inter. Uh, they lost to Bologna at, uh, as well at, at, at the moment, trying to uh, slowly get out, out of it. Other teams that are in this European race, uh, I mean we have Bologna and the Roma uh, that's fourth and fifth. 
And then for the Euro, the, the European spots, you have Atalanta, Napoli, Fiorentina, potentially Lazio and Monza have been having a good run as well. Uh, losing only one out of the last five games. So maybe we have to add Monza in there. I don't want to add to, to, to Torino, but because Torino is always a team that goes in with high hopes and then still uh, stays in the middle. But uh, of those teams, if Napoli can solidify their form, and yes, if you play a 1-1 against Torino, but you also play a 1-1 against Inter, you're the first team that scores against Inter after the 75th minute this season. I mean, this is an incredible stat tell, telling you how good Inter are. Um, I think Napoli will finish in, in the European point spots. I also think Atalanta, Fiorentina, uh, you need a little bit help. You probably will need to win the Conference League, which might be a tough ask if there's Villa in there and Lille. But this Fiorentina team is under Italian is quite exciting. <laughs> but their um, conversion of chances, this is where uh, they are really let down. Um, and I fear that Lazio will not do it, even though they have uh, now under new management. And the last one I want to talk about is the relegation battle, because that in Italy is really, really tight this season. You have between the 13th, which is now Lecce, on 28 points, and the 9th, which is Sassuolo, 23 5 points. Interestingly enough, I mean, there were some teams that had some good runs in there. Uh, I'm looking especially at Empoli, although they have now three losses in a row. But uh, if I look at the losses of Empoli, this was Makaka, Cali but Milan is okay, Bologna, those are two teams that you can actually probably lose against and you were not really outclassed there. Uh, Cagliari was in a really good run, now lost this past weekend. Uh, we had Verona, who basically sold everybody. <laughs> putting in quite decent performances. Two wins out of the last five games. Udinese is kind of a team that uh, you don't know what to talk about, what, what, what you uh, get. Frosinone is probably the one that's trending really the worst. Sassol is also not doing well, although they got the previous weekend a win against Frosinone. But uh, Sassuolo really looking on Salernitana. Yeah, they're gonna fire their coach again and probably bring back Pippo Inzaghi, which I find funny too. But um, the most biggest story, of course, was Lecce, where after uh, losing on the past weekend at home to Verona, you know, big relegation uh, battle. Taveras, of course, uh, headbutted a Verona player, was duly sacked. New coach Kahn comes in. Lecce win, the only team down there that are winning, and suddenly they're up in 13th place again, but everything but safe. Uh, at the moment, you saw already the, the uh, chances in uh, on the text coming through. I mean, South Salernitana is pretty much a certainty of going down. Frosinone, Sassuolo. Those are the two that are, but there is a good, a decent chance for Empoli and Cagliari also in there. I personally would love if uh, uh, Claudio Ranieri can pull out another miracle for Cagliari. So yeah, that's it for me from what I wanted to say about Serie A. I hope I will do a little bit more regular videos in the upcoming weeks after the international break. Uh, I think there's quite an interesting round. Know that the round is around Easter Sunday. On Easter Sunday, no one plays in Italy. So we have on the Saturday before, we start actually with Na Napoli at Atlanta with an interesting round. Then Lazio, Juve and Fiorentina, Milan. I think those are two pretty big games. It got to be said. Uh, and then on Easter Monday, comes, it's more rele relegation battles that are really interesting. Like Cagliari, Ellas, Verona, Sassuolo, Udine. Uh, if you like it rough and tough, that might be the game to watch uh, and maybe Empoli can pull an upset at Inter, uh, an Inter team as I said that does not have too much to play for anymore but you know you also want to get the title over the line I guess. In any case that was it for me from Sierra please add anything you want uh, to that I have I mean I made a bunch of short videos on Sierra, on, on Sierra over the past weeks but I want to get back to a little bit more regular scheduling because it's my favorite league although the wrong team is gonna win it this time around. In any case, give me a thumbs up, enjoyed this video, and I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.